He never unmuted himself. Oh no. It's meant to unmute itself automatically. Right, we start again. Start again from now, yeah? Look, look, no, these... I've just run the show. This is hilarious. No, but you know what you you know what it is, yeah. When when I when I mute everyone, yeah, it doesn't unmute after the intro. All right, <laughs> so unprofessional, James. I think you should do it especially early in the morning, like you know. <laughs> Yeah. Lee, imagine we got you to do the technical side of things. Oh, right. you know, we'll be here all morning and all night. <laughs> yeah, right. No, whether it's early or not, don't let me do it. Don't let me get over those controls. Whatever happens, like, you know. You know what? Listen, F it. We're live. We're recording. We're not going to go. <laughs> we're here, people. We're here, people. It's not the best of introductions, but there is a big introduction to make a big special welcome, a special guest. She knows Arsenal. I'm sure you know about the channel already. If you don't, there's a link in the description below. So show some love and big up Jess all the way in LA, tuning, um, locking in to Forever Arsenal. What are you saying, Jess? Oh, yes. Thank you guys so much for having me. I love stepping in. Uh, this is the perfect time to come on and talk to you guys because we won. So, um, yeah, and thank you guys for waking up early for me. I really appreciate that too. I'm sure it'll be worth it. It'll be worth it, guys. I promise. Go on, Lee. Go on, Lee. What are you, what I've, got are you I've got to say, the comments are going to be buzzing now. Like, you know, poor Jordan's <laughs> going to get it big time. You know what I mean? Like, you know, so, but there you go. Is, but he loves it, though. That's the thing about Jordan. He loves it. He loves it. He'll be, he'll be on holiday tuning in, comment section. He'll be loving every single comment saying, get Jordan off, get Jess in full time. <laughs> it's a, a you can see it now. You can see it now. It is what it is. James, how you feeling, man? Shattered. But good. <laughs> good. Yeah, good. good. Nice. No, Jordan, Jordan, Jordan always puts us through these 8 a.m.s. Um, so I'm, I've no doubt it would been no different. Um, but it was really good to have Jess on. Um, it's really good to have walked the group as well. And I mean walked it, even though we lost in Lons. I think we've made really light work of this, which is great. Um so yeah, lot, lots of positives, lots of positives. And I bet you that. lot went mad when Martinelli scored, didn't you? you I bet you all went mad. Like, you know. Hey, well, we know what you was on in the stadium, mate. We know what you was on in the stadium. When they hit 3 nil. you didn't want to see no more goals, did you? <laughs> I said, shut up shop now, like, reserve energy for Wolves. <laughs> <laughs> Jess, we do predictions every week. I don't know if you watched the show, but I, I think Lee predicted 3 nil. so... A running theme on the show is when someone predicts a score, if it hits that score in the game, whether it's the 20th minute, like last night, or the 70th minute, you know, there's a, there's a bit of hoping and praying that it sticks to that score. But we will bring the prediction table up there. And you, we're going to get give you the chance to predict the, the Wolves game this weekend. But Jess, let's start with you, because it's your first time on the show. Not your first time on AFTV, but the first time on the show. Um, 6-0 win against Lons. What's the, what's the highlight for you and your overall thoughts? Uh, the I guess the highlight for me is uh, where do you even begin? We're like James said, we walk the group. We were top. We can go into that PSV game and rest a bunch of players, which is great. That's a highlight. And um, getting our football back. I think that's the main highlight. Um, it's hard to pick out just one player. But I think after weeks and weeks of talking about what's going on with the attack, why don't we look as fluid for us to put in that performance? I think. That's the highlight. Um, so many goals. Football was great. Counterattacking goals, um, team goals, individual, everything. You know, it, it had everything. We also had a clean sheet. Defensively, we were really good. It was a well-rounded, balanced performance. And for me personally, this may be like, maybe I'm gassing. I don't know. Maybe I need some sleep. But this was my favorite performance under Mikel Arteta so far. And um, I think it's our best performance under Mikel Arteta so far. Um, it just, it had everything. We've won by big score lines before under Mikel Arteta, but not like this. This felt so, so good and mature. And so the highlight for me is just, we have our arsenal back. Is that what we can say? We have our arsenal back a little bit. And yeah, yeah. Um, there's no real worries about like, where's the attack? It's there. We saw it. So we can relax now. <laughs> yeah, well, that's something I ain't been relaxed about this season because <laughs> nobody has last been. season. Yeah, well, so some people have, you know, kept on mentioning that we're a much more control inside and this is much more stable in order to win a league. So yeah, I'm getting my head around that. But you are right. Last night was more of the exhilarating Arsenal that we saw from last season. Lee, you was there. I tend to start with you, but I started with a special guest today instead. Yeah. Did, did, did you feel um, like? We got our football back, like Jess said. Yeah, like, 
I have to say, I think we've got our Jesus back because I think, like, you know, he's so key to... He's just, you know, this talk about goals. He's just more, so more, much more important than goals, what he brings. He just brings... He makes the team click, you know, with his um, hold-up play, his movement and everything like that. And what, what it does now is that when you've got them free firing, which we haven't had all season, if you look on it, like, you know, Jesus was out at the beginning, then Martinelli went out, then Saka went out. Then they, they got back for a, a couple of games. No coincidence that our best game was Seville away. Um, why was that? Because they was all back back and probably like back into fitness as well. I think like, you know, it's a couple of games back for Jesus now. And I thought like he was outstanding last night. And I, I have to say, you know, in Europe, the, these teams don't come with the same sort of uh, defensive mind as the Premier League. You know, they're a little bit more open. Um, and when teams are a little bit more open, you know, Saka really didn't have uh, two defenders on him at times when he, when he actually got the ball. By the time he got into the edge of the box and that, there was a few round him. But uh, he had a little bit more freedom. We had a little bit more... Martin Lilly had a little bit more freedom. If you give these guys that little bit of freedom, they're going to punish you. And uh, that's what happened. I thought um, once we scored yesterday, it was a breeze. I said like yesterday, I cannot remember all the years following Arsenal. We've been 5 nil up at half-time. I can't remember. Like, you know... Um, and and being in total control, like we was in in, in all of the uh, Champions League games at home, and and the biggest thing for me is, and I'm going to take from this is that we struggled in the last couple of years in in the Europa League, and this is obviously the better competition and everything like that. And the reason is because we haven't rotated as much in in this competition. We've kept like we've rotated, but we've basically kept the the team going, and we just breeze this this um this group. And people turn around you and say, yeah, well, you maybe you should do and all that, like, yeah. But listen, there's, a, there's other easier groups in the, well, not easy, there are easy groups in the um, Champions League and, and certain teams are, are, are struggling in it, like, you know. So, listen, um, from, from I think it's, the per, you know, apart from, like, I can't believe we lost to them after, I was so impressed with them out there. It's unreal. Uh, they're probably one of the best teams we played. So to go and beat them six 0 you know, is lovely and uh, almost the perfect um, Champions League campaign because we go now um, to Holland, where both teams are qualified. Don't matter um, what team we pick, what team PSV pick, because nothing's going to change. So I, I don't know if uh, we will go like with a youth team or whatever, and, and PSV will as well. But who cares? It doesn't matter. We, we've we've done and dusted with a game to go. You can't ask for no more. So did PSV have a better head-to-head -head against Lons then? Yeah, yeah, I think so because they've qualified as well, like you know. So yeah, so oh, um, I, th I thought that I thought Lons had a shout there. Fair enough. No, nah, so um, I'll see that last they, night. They play each other though, no? So no. Yeah, I think no. I don't. I don't. No, no. no yeah. Yeah. PSV. Yeah, you're right. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. There must be something in the head-to-head -head or, or goal difference. Or yeah, whatever. yeah. It was one-one in one of the games, and PSV won the other one-nil. So that was the okay. Game. Yeah. So there's no way Lons can. Fair enough. I this this might be a really weird thing to say. I didn't think Lons were that bad. Um, defensively, they were kind of a mess. Uh, they did take the game to us, so we punished them for it. But I didn't. I actually thought they showed a little something on the ball, and they they tried yeah. to take the game to us. And and weirdly, I thought the first half we did look. You can't use the word unsettled when you're falling it up for most of the half. But we looked um, like we actually were put through our paces just a touch, like defensively. And then second half, it was just like, yeah, give them nothing, even though the game was won. Um, and and so I sort of give Lons a little bit of credit for that. They, they came to play. Um, but we, we just walked through them. And the timing of that performance couldn't have been better for a Pakai Saka and Arteta who were on record very recently saying, you know, I'm doubled up, I'm down the right, I'm finding a new way. Arteta saying, you know, there's loads of traffic, I want to drive 100 miles per hour and all that. You know, I, I think sometimes he says things in press conferences and then the following games are sort of remembering and going, uh, Mikel, in this one, I think, you know, he, he kind of was proven right in that you give us that little bit of space, you know, we will kill you for it. And um, it was good to see Arsenal be that efficient. I think four goals from eight shots or five goals from eight shots in that first half, that's also ruthless. I mean, it's not just 
fluidity and you know I, I remember a couple of years back we had 11 shots and a half against Leicester when nil nil at half time like it's not just it's not just about fluidity the team in front of goal was so efficient that cut back from Jesus you know Havertz making the most for that opportunity Saka as well on the end of a bit of a deflection or whatever you know the, the team were were hungry for goals and, and and they all especially that front five they all you know came away with something I think when you mentioned the timing of it, that you're right, because I'm looking at it off the back of the last international break of the calendar year, going into this hectic schedule, we've hit the ground running. We've, we've gone to the top of the league first game back and, and we've you know qualified top in the Champions League the second game. We've got a favourable next couple of games when you look at opposition. City are playing Tottenham, Newcastle, United. Not that you know United are much opposition this season in the league, or hopefully not. They're only six points behind with all the madness going on around there. But um, I, I think the timing was perfect because it just sets us up. It, this period can be season-defining. It hasn't often been season-defining with Man City, but it can be season-defining in the sense where you break away from most of the pack across this December schedule. So to start you know, the, the, the post-international break fixtures the way we have. Perfect. Two clean sheets, comfortable win against Lons, a hard-fought win against Brentford, and two goals in two games for um, our, our new, what, number eight? Do I call him our new number eight? Because we don't really know the, the final position for him. Just says, yeah. Yeah, is that the fi- is that is that Havertz's final position in Arteta's eyes, number eight? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I feel that there's enough out there um if you you know read different reports i, I know the athletic came out with something a couple of days ago um a podcast where they spoke about this has always been the plan and i think it's when you look at what arteta did from the beginning first games that kai havertz played like in the league for us was at left eight and he played there like five times so yeah. i think it's always been the plan and it was just whether or not those pieces worked in real life and not just on paper. I think it makes sense to have Kai Havertz and Rice and and uh, Odegaard. That looks good on paper. But when we saw it the first couple of times, it was like, okay, they're kind of running into each other. It's not quite working. But I think a lot of it just has to do with the confidence of the players that are there. And this is the first game since Kai Havertz has been here where it kind of felt like it clicked. Before, I thought... Maybe sometimes people were gassing it a little bit. They were maybe trying to see things that weren't there. This time, it definitely was there. Still not world-class performance or anything like that, but you could see a midfielder there. This is the first time he felt like an actual number eight. And so, yeah, I think he is is an option at number eight. Like, he's not always going to be the main option, I don't think. Or it, it doesn't mean that you won't see something different. Like, we've seen Jorginho and Rice and Odegaard. We've seen different things. But he's definitely going to be playing in that position. So every time that he plays well there, we have to just be like, yes, because we need it to work. We need this to work. And so he was good. He was good. Um, Scored a goal. uh, What is it? Three goals and four appearances or not four appearances, but like four games in all competitions because he scored for his national team as well. So he's in decent form. You know, he's in decent form. Red hot. Look at that. (laughs) So yeah, I'm um I'm happy for him. And at this stage, despite not really understanding this the signing and not really loving some of the performances at the beginning, I just want it to work because 65 million could not go down the drain. So yeah, mm-hmm. well done, Kai. And hopefully we're on the path to like kind of putting those bricks together to to build up some form here. Yeah, I, I really liked his performance. Uh, yeah, yesterday I think I was, you know, full time and during the watch along, you know, I was sort of saying, yeah, you know, performance a six or seven out of 10, he was good. I, I'm, I think on the full time, I said seven to eight, but like I'm nearer that eight. Like I actually thought, I mean, I watched it back and, you know, the usual comps did the rounds on socials. He was legitimately good. And this is, it's like you said, people were maybe trying a little too hard in the past, but this is where I like to think we're quite fair. Like we weren't just being critical for the sake of it. We were saying, no, we need to see a little bit more. We need to see something. And, like, I think you can take away the, maybe not the Brentford. <laughs> okay, the Brentford goal, okay, is massive. But if you take away his goal yesterday, I don't think I feel any differently about his performance. Like, his ability to make that run and, and prod it into the back of the net, give us the lead, you know, break the deadlock, that's great. And obviously that adds to the, the weight of his performance. 
but the things I really wanted to see that we got that I don't think we've had anywhere near what we got yesterday in terms of these kind of things were see what we did for that third goal the there's like a loose ball he right. gets on the end of it with one touch then his mm. second touch takes it into his stride and then his third touch gets it out to Martinelli and I love that that's just really good midfield play I've won a loose ball in midfield I've driven into the space and I've fed it to my front line that's all I need like Last year, Jack has kind of Jack has looked back at last year as some kind of like, you know, some like Gundogan regen, like you know, because he was getting the goals and assists, you know, some output machine. And don't get me wrong, the the level of output and, and the way he improved in that was undoubtedly a big talking point. But Jack's all round game was brilliant. The tackles at Newcastle, the the being the like the heartbeat in midfield with Thomas Partey, he felt like that was difficult to play through. And if we can just get anything like a good central midfielder from Havertz who just facilitates everything. Because off the ball, he's actually been pretty good since day one. I'll give him that. I've had no problem with him off the ball at Arsenal. Um, then, then, like, I'm starting to get it. I'm starting to see a, you know, six foot four central midfielder who puts himself about, who's showing some decent tech. And I'm going, OK, this is something I can get on board with. Let's now... Lons were bad. I will say, sorry, okay. contradicting myself. I just said Lons were good. Lons defensively were bad. Lons had a go on the ball. I'll give him that. Um, so there is that. But it was kind of good to see him when he when he had that moment in the second half uh, near the byline where he kind of had the ball. He tried a little bit of skill that didn't quite come off, but then a little drag back and he was away. And I was like, this is good. You're not discouraged by the things that aren't working. You're trying to drive with the ball. He looked quicker. He looked more purposeful with his runs. Um, he still was hesitant to lose the ball, but I think that's almost instilled in all our Arsenal players. I think there's a reason Erdegaard doesn't look quite as um, exciting and magical this season because I think there is a, I don't know, a focus on ball retention and, you know, don't give the ball away cheaply. And he did good. He did good. He, he'll keep his place against Wolves and deserves to. And this is going to be the first time this season that I'm going to go, and obviously we'll leave that for the last part of the show, but it'll be the first time this season that I'm saying, yeah, Kai deserves his place. Keep him there. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, what Jess said is probably the sums it up for me with Havertz. It was a good performance for sure. There's still a lot more that we expect from him, in my opinion. But it's it's, the, it's headed in the right trajectory the last couple of games. Prior to international break, James, you said maybe people are gassing it. I think Jess used the word gassing. No, people were gassing it. People that were saying Kai Havertz had been good for us prior to this international break were lying to themselves and lying to the people they're talking to. The last couple of games, he has been good. Against Brentford, the goal, you know, he he, he was the, the factor in that win. And, and he starts the game and he actually has an impact. Like you said, I want to see moments that Xhaka didn't bring us in that position, which is the technical side of the game. Let me not say the technical side, because Xhaka was actually technically good in that last season. But I mean, the... The drag backs you talk about, creating a bit of space in a tight situation. That's that's the habits we knew from Leverkusen, maybe not from Chelsea, but that's the habits we we hope to unlock the Leverkusen one, not the Chelsea one. Um, Lee, images of you dancing, singing 60 million down the drain. I've seen it on Twitter. Um, so yeah, you're, yeah. Enjoying, you're enjoying the moment. I'm going to say it now. Confidence is an unbelievable thing in football. Because yesterday you see the confidence of him, like you know, as, as James said about that goal, um, that, he, that for, the, for the Martinelli one, like a couple of weeks ago he wouldn't have done that. It, you know, it was a really important important thing. Before he done that little turn, he tried a little turn before that, and it went out of play. Uh, but he didn't melt on it. He, it because he's confident. He thought, oh, I'll, I'll get the ball again and do it. He's just been playing safe. There's been just times when he's just been playing safe, and. Um, you know, I, I, I think we were talking about this yesterday. Listen, if Robert Perez was playing now with the internet and, and the social media and all that, everybody would have been going mad about him. Like, do you know what I mean? To just give him a little bit more time. I know you can't have time now because of social media and everything like that. But it is really, you know, we were talking about this yesterday. And I'm going to say it now. People turn around and go, oh, yeah, the fans have got his back and all that. Like, by singing the song. No, they ain't. Like the fans just love the song. Let's get that right. They love the song. So any excuse to sing it, they're singing. Like you know, you've got half the fan base that uh, that um, a Mikel Arteta, 
that, that, that want him to, to be successful because it's his sign. And you've got another half the fan base that don't like Mikel and thinking, oh, this is the one where he's going to fail. So we're, we're jump on him there. And, and I think it's a little bit unfair on him, if I'll be honest, you know, just let him play and just see him settle in and, and, um, and go. And I, I think in the last few games, I'm going to say it now, people slagged me off for it. I thought he had a very, very good game at Newcastle. I didn't, I didn't think he was bad in that game. I know there was a couple of things we didn't do, but battled hard in midfield. I'm going to say this as well. The one thing I do like about him, six or seven fouls yesterday, right? Yeah. No, none of Another them booked. As well. Did he yeah. ever get booked? No. Clever, clever little We've foul. got our Rodri. Oh, We've I get it now. Does the little... Things that you, you need to do. He breaks oh, up. We're, we're crossing over to the gassing again, Jess. I, I see it. No, the the Kaka Rodri hybrid. It's finally, I understand. I get I, it. I was just saying on his performance yesterday, I, you know, there was times when, when he breaks up the play, they get, get through us on the line. He doesn't go in silly. It's just a little, little tug, a little trip. Does that well. Wins his battles in the air and everything like that. And that was the one thing that a lot of people at Chelsea were criticising. Oh, he don't get stuck in. I've not seen that. Um, but I just think it's confidence. I really do. I think his confidence is now lifted. It, it, it was evident today, you know, and then when he gets the goal as as well. Um, the one thing I will say about the goal, he's in there. You know, that's that's your midfield player getting in there from deep, which is something that we needed. And uh, listen, we, 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 there's there's times we're going to expect better, of course, like, you know, but I don't think he's been as bad as what everybody's been making out, like, you know, I get there's a lot of fans turning around and want to want to jump on him. It's, it's really funny, like, I, I'm not going to mention names, but a couple of my mates in, in, in the group, like, have said nothing about Havertz, right, nothing, you know, that, uh, whether he's been good or bad. And because he's had a couple of good games now, they're coming out and going, ah, oh, I told you about Havertz. <laughs> you haven't said nothing. You've not said nothing, you just kept quiet. You know what I mean? Like, so, like, the, 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 there's a genuine feeling, I think, that there's a lot of fans out there that want him to do well because it's Mikel signing. And there's a lot of fans out there that don't want him to do well because it's Mikel signing, like, you know. And I think, like, um, he's going to have to come through that. And uh, I, I, I've got to say, yesterday, it wasn't the best player in the park. I've got to say that, you know, he was, but he had a very, very good game. Um, he's up there for me. He's up he there, makes, yeah. He, I'm, makes I'm, my I'm top, he makes my top three. He, he was up there. Tommy Asu and Jesus, I think. Tommy Asu. I, I wouldn't say top three. I was just saying yeah, he was in the top. I think he was in the top ten. Better than Erdegaard. Top ten. Definitely. Yeah, I thought he was better than I. I thought, like you know, Declan Rice again for me. I, I just, he just. Yeah, but Declan that. Rice. There's almost no point. Like with Declan yeah. Rice, it's like, how was he? Nine again. Like yeah, just the top three were in there. Uh, sorry, the front three were in there. And then I think it was Kai Havertz. I think, like, you know, um, I, I, I'll say it now, you know, Saliba weren't at his best last night. I think that, you know, that they're sent Worst forward. player on the pitch, Listen, Saliba. Saliba. Well, Saliba we, we've got to start a dialogue. For yeah, I think... <laughs> he did get back. That's one thing, because I see a lot of people saying he got cooked, and he did, but those moments he got cooked, he, he, was, in front of the, he was in front of the player again, like, a few moments. Yeah, yeah, but and also, I have to think, was it Wahi or Wahi or whatever his name yeah. was like? I was quite impressed with him. I thought he would, you know, um, give him a bit of a, a bit of a. Do you know what? Sometimes you need that. I think he needed that yesterday, like just a little wake up call. If you're not quite up your game, people are uh, are going to uh, are going to expose you. But you know, listen, he did get back well and defend defend it after a couple of times. But yeah, like you know, Kai Havertz definitely in the top five, like. You know? Yeah, I feel like the whole front five, or like you know, yeah, the front five is all in the top. And the thing about Declan Rice is I feel like he's never going to be the shining guy in, in games like this. It's the games where we're playing against the better sides where he's going to mm -hmm. show why he's 100 million pounds, you know. So I expected Declan Rice, like, after we got 4-0 up, I'm like, yeah, this isn't going to be, like, your day unless you score a goal. But it doesn't always need to be Declan Rice day. It's mm -hmm. He's had enough days. He needs to rest. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that that yeah, that's a great yeah. point, Jess. So, I'm not being. I wanted him coming off a lot. Uh, if if he hadn't come out of the second half, I'd I'd have been okay with that. Like you know, put Jul I thought Jorginho, he, he he come on a bit too late. If I'll be honest, I'd have, I'd have sent Declan off another ten minutes earlier. If if I'll be honest, you know. But I, I liked I, his I, cameo too, Jorginho. I mean, I mean, I think five and up at home is probably quite good. Uh, quite good. He's done well. Did He's anybody notice his penalty? He didn't do as big of a hop. Yeah. Did yeah. anybody notice that? Yeah. Is that his first goal for Arsenal? 
Jorginho scored the pen. No, first goal. First goal. Because the Emmy Martinez one didn't count for him. It was yeah, only I goal. think it was his first. Someone said that yesterday. Yes, it was his oh, first yeah. goal. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that was it. Well, he's, no, he's bagged the pen for us, hasn't he? I'm not sure. Wait Someone said it was his first goal. It was in preseason. That what, the oh, one you're man. talking about is in preseason, James. Oh no, I'm giving it to MLS All Stars. Yeah, Hold because on. towards the Seca was our penalty taker in the in the league towards the end of the season. I think it was someone said to me yesterday it was his first goal. So that's crazy. I really thought he'd um let's have maybe, it. Maybe that's why the conversation was being had with him and Odegaard, because I was thinking, you know, maybe well, Martin Elliott wanted it first. I don't know if you see that on TV. Like, he picked up the ball and uh do you know when that um I didn't even know there was an handball in that like, but Martin Ellie was convinced. He was convinced, you know what I mean? Like, before it went to the screen, he said, that's a handball uh, or, or yeah. a penalty, you know. Uh, and he picked up the ball. And before it even was the referee was going to the screen, he picked the ball up and was walking towards a penalty spot. But I, I think that they had a conversation there and, and they said they give it to Jorginho in the end. It was, it was his first goal. Yeah. I really thought he'd got another. I really thought there was another, like, in some extravagant win. Maybe I'm thinking of the mighty MLS All-Stars. That might have been the other mm-hmm. pen I was thinking of. I'm actually glad you said that, Lee, about Martinelli wanting it because on the screen we didn't see that. What we saw is Odegaard and um, Jorginho talking about it on the spot. But in my head, I was thinking, Martinelli, this is, I want you to want these because you are the one I look at as the one that's hungry for goals, hungry for mm. the end. Product. I want you to be taking these. I want you to worry about how much goals you're on come the end of the champion. I want you to be that guy. So I'm glad that. He did want it, but if Jorginho hasn't scored, it's 5 0. That's probably a factor in it. Give it to him. But let's talk about a couple of the attackers. Um, Saka's joined a, a, a quite quite a list, and it's, it's a very short list. Um, one that's comprised of Karim Benzema and Luis Suarez in the Champions League, being now the third player, the first from a Premier League club to score an assist in three Champions League games in a row, which is, which is quite a feat. I can't even lie. Um, Mm. He just he, for for someone that's not started the season like he started last season, the numbers he is producing, it's a sign of a great player. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Um, Jess, thoughts on Saka? Oh, go on, Jim. Sorry, I just very quickly just add to that stat that I mean, it was a goal and assist in the opening game against PSV as well. So I think it's just that Lons away game that has basically made it not five in a row. <laughs> and he he got injured. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, um, but yeah, Saka is, um, listen, we have two world class players in our team, and he's one of them. Uh, I think when you look at Saka, well, uh, I'll say this that like one of my favorite players outside of Arsenal is Mohamed Salah, and um, when I look at Saka, I'm like, if he had, if I had to say Saka, this is a player that I want you to like model your game off after it would be Salah because no matter what his form is like, he gets GA all the time. He has so, he's so like consistent for Liverpool, no matter what's going on. GI, yes. What's GI? Uh, Goals and assists. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and you're worried about how I do the intro in modern day terms. Hey, just, all you know, these terms yeah. that they come out with and all that, you know. Yeah, about this wise man we have here, bottom right. <laughs> so, like, I just want Saka to be that type of player that no matter what's going on, he's he's getting the goals and assists, and that's exactly what he's doing. I think people considered him having a slow start because Arsenal and Saka didn't look as fluid as last season, but really, he's still getting. You know, he's still influencing the team in the ways that are most important for a forward player. And so, yeah, I, I, Saka for me is just, I don't even worry about him. Like the performance that he had yet um, yesterday wasn't like, it didn't, it wasn't the best performance we've ever seen from Saka, but it doesn't matter because he's so consistent. He's eight and nine almost every single game. It's crazy. And so, yeah, I'm not surprised that he's where he is. Um, I think people that were saying he needed Champions League to show that he was this player were just trying to prolong the inevitable. Saka is a, he is, he is, yeah, he's him. He's him. He is. He really is. And um, we're lucky to have him. We we really are. I think so. Three goals, four assists already in the Champions League. Jess makes a fantastic point there because I don't think he was great at Brentford. I really don't. But when it mattered, he's no, put in no. the he's put in the assist and all that, like you know. And I don't think he has been at his best this season by a long 
long chalk, but he still contributes and he still there's always that chance he can do so. And people turn around and go, oh, why are they keeping him on and all that lot? Because there is that always that he can open up teams and, and things like that, like you know. And uh, you know, I, I, even though he ain't been at his best today, he's still a wonderful player to watch. You know, like and I tell you, like even yesterday, uh, he, he took a few kicks from them. He just gets up, gets on with it. He's brave. He's very, very brave. He knows he's going to get kicked. He knows he's going to get um, tackled. But he still goes in for the ball, still gets on the ball, still wants the ball. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan. It was nice to see him in a bit of space. like That that, um, yeah. that older guard goal just reminded me of many goals from last season where he, he Saka picks it up one-on-one, he's running the defender down, cuts in a bit, allows the overlap, Tommy comes flying in, little pass off, cross into the box. Bang. We haven't Great seen that goal. this season because of the the low blocks and the tactical tweaks to become more controlling. But it's nice to see, you know, full flow. James? Yeah, he was very good. He's stunned. <laughs> Sorry, it was your turn, uh, mate. It was your turn. Oh, well, so I, was, I, was, I was mid out of slightly itchy eye. Um, cold, yeah, you, you know, um, yeah, you summed up really well, Jess, as well, on the whole get goals and assists that that Salah comparison in terms of the fact that he cannot be at his best but put up numbers is a really good one because that's what proper output players do, they right. find a way to have contributed. And the thing with Saka, he's not just like on the end of a of a cross where the left-hand side's done all the hard work and he finds a tap-in at the back. He's putting out big crosses for Trossard and Havertz to save us points. You know, he has earned us three points in his contributions at the bridge at Brentford alone. He, like, I'm, I'm so interested as the season goes on to see whether he comes to life more as a dribbler and an out-and-out -out winger. Like, does he find a way to get past these fullbacks? Does he find another route you know, via in the inside, outside, whatever it is. Or does he actually kind of continue at this level and then end up having like a 30 goal and assist season? Like kind of accidentally. <laughs> Not accidentally, but you get what I mean. By the end of it, because I was on um tactical insight with Graham, Lee's favorite show, of course. Um, so he'll obviously know what I'm talking about because he'll have watched it. We um I mean I couldn't actually believe it. This was just I think just for the international break when he reeled off that he had five assists and eight, sorry, five goals and eight assists in all comps. I thought, wow, he's racked up thirty. When did he? When? When did he do that? Mm -hmm. And now, now it's seven and ten. Like it's just, the, it's just he's churning out this output. It's phenomenal without being at his best. Which what tells me it's sustainable. I think if he were playing like a ten out of ten every game and he had the space of the pitch, I'd be going, oh, wait till they figure you out. <laughs> wait till they clock that you're the. But but actually, they have. It's from last season that they've known that he's got this and. He's, he's leveled up. Um, and I'm actually quite glad the narrative's changed because his performances haven't changed that much. But we are talking about it differently because we are learning about this team with every game. That's why we do podcasts not once a month just to catch up on how things are going. We do them after every game because we're constantly learning about this team. Um, and we are learning, I think, a lot about our style of play. We're now learning a little bit about Havertz and, and what he's meant to do and what he could maybe be. But we're learning about how Arteta is still ensuring that we're getting a lot out of Saka and Martinelli. I, I think Martinelli's like output hasn't been the same, but I still mm. think he's like a handful. I Some people were saying he wasn't that great against Brentford. I, I, I didn't see that. I saw someone who was kind of really in the thick of it, trying to make things happen. Um, so we're very lucky to have those two. Uh, but actually, you know what? We always do, we always do that. We say we're very lucky. Well done, Halem, producing some great talents. Well done to whoever found Martinelli, because <laughs> someone within the club did that and spent six million on him. So, um, that yeah, was that, that, that was my well. favorite goal of the lot. I said it on full time with you yesterday because Martinelli needed a goal. Jesus was probably the most eye catching, the little turn in. And I'm going to talk about Jesus because four and four in the Champions League, um, very, very solid numbers. But Martinelli needed that goal because his output hasn't been the same. I think he's been good this season, similar to Saka. It's just that Saka's getting a lot of numbers whilst being good, and Martinelli's numbers have, you know, gone down, and we expect mm. them to be rising. Martinelli, last Martinelli's also playing on that left-hand side where it's like a constant rotation of different players Hello. every single game. I think that's yeah. also a part of it. He doesn't. He didn't know who was going to be near him. With Saka, everything always looks the same. 
I wonder whether with Martinelli there's a little bit more responsibility to help Zinchenko. Not that Zinchenko has been a problem defensively mm. at all recently, but I wonder whether there is a like because his work rate is is sort of mind blowing. And Saka works incredibly hard down the right to come back and cover. I'm not saying he doesn't, uh, but but there's something about Martinelli. Like how often he does that. You know, when someone's driving through midfield and he kind of runs all the way back into central midfield, gets his leg across and kind of wins the ball. For, for a counter or just wins us back possession. like he, he does a lot of that, Martinelli. So, yeah, he's been good this season. But you're right. I mean, we've got to talk about Jesus because he, he's he's done two international breaks in a row now. He's come back. The first game's been away from home. He's kind of been straight in the 11, which perhaps we didn't expect. Not done that great in the away game in the league. Champions League comes around. I saw a tweet saying we should we just start playing Champions League music in the Premier League before games, and you're going to start getting 40 goals from Jesus across across the calendar. Well, you know, across the campaign, he he just loves this competition. But not only does he love it, he he looks world class every time. Look at a goal in Seville. Look at yeah. the assist in Seville. Look at look at that drag back. You know, or cut. You know, cut. Yeah, shot from his left to his right. He loves it. He just loves the Champions League. Fair play to him. Yeah. Quality. Four goals, two assists in the first, well, I say first five games. He's only started four of those because he was injured for one. So he's got a flawless, flawless record in the Champions League so far this season. Um, I want to talk about Jay Zeus. I'm, I'm looking at the time because I also think Tommy Asu deserves mm. a little discussion as well. Jess, do you agree? You guys, Tommy Asu, he just blew my mind. Like, what? What was that? And then, you know what? I, I realized that people are trying to say that he didn't mean the pass to Martinelli. Guys, he meant that. Be <laughs> serious. Give Tamiyasu his credit. But yeah, like, um, I think Tamiyasu deserves a lot of credit. I think Ben White should be looking over his shoulder. I think that's that's something that a lot of people will be talking about over the next couple of days. But it's just nice to see Tommy get some some credit. Spent $18 million on a on a player like that. He has so much left foot, right foot, good defending. He's getting up and back. Good athlete. He's really good. Um, Aerially. He had, um, is that one of the best fullback performances? I, I feel like it's one of the best fullback performances I've seen from an Arsenal player in a long time. I can't really think of one that stands out. This one was one of them. It was in the Champions League. So, yeah, he was outstanding. I said he was solid. Sort of I said he was solid against Brentford as well. Obviously, he wasn't as attacking, creating chances, so he didn't show that side of his game. But I thought he was up He was up there. I said candidate for man of the match. A lot of people were like, well, how? What match was you watching? This one, I do actually think he was a, like, a strong candidate. I think he got a couple of assists. The older guard one definitely. That too. He could have had a hat trick of assists if Haberts had scored the initial header. Remember that first header that oh, he had like, oh, early on? He could have yeah. had a hat trick of assists. Like, Tommy was not playing any games. Like, he was... He's very, very good. Um, he was my man of the match, for yeah, sure. Cool. And this is his worst position across the back four. Everybody says he's not as good on the right. You know what I'm saying? I forgot about that moment. Because that was actually he's quite not. good from Havertz as well. No, he actually he's did really well. well to... What's that? The goalkeeper was well beaten from that header. It was a great header, great cross, great header. Yeah, it was It was just one of those where you just go unlucky. Like, good football, yeah. good effort. Yeah, yeah you, you made a lot of that, but... You're right, Tommy Asu. It was it was funny because I'm going to hold my hands up. I didn't notice it until people said it, and then I kind of thought back to some of the moments, watched it back, and I actually forgot about that clearance assist. But you're right. I mean, maybe he did mean it. The, the way he struck, the way he the way he put his foot through it, <laughs> it, it, for it, real. it looked like he meant it. It was just so phenomenal that I was like, "Did he mean it?" Um, but, it was so clean. Yeah. That's what it was. It was so clean that you thought, what was it? what's going on here? Yeah, I mean, his, I, I also didn't give him enough credit on the watch along for um, how good his touch was to keep the Saka pass alive. Sa Saka's, I'm not, a, I'm not saying it's a bad pass from Saka, but sometimes when you're playing football, the timing of when the ball lands at your feet is slightly awkward to when the timing of your, your feet are moving. So he just has to quickly almost just hit it in front of him to then break into the stride and then put a great ball into the box for uh, for Odegaard. Yeah, he was great. And this is these are great problems. I, I, I'm not trying to take from Tommy Asu. I'm trying to make a wider point here on, on, on the, the club and the squad. But I thought Kivior's um, cameo, second half, I say cameo, he had as long on the pitch as, as Tommy Asu did. Yeah. I, I thought he was really good as well. Um, 
and those two with timber to return hopefully a january signing i think arsenal are going to look at a defensive player arteta just keeps keeps talking about how short we are at the back it's like we're only missing timber but anyway i i i, th- I think suddenly you go we've come a long way from the cedric holding days we have you know unless holding is that signing and i've seen those rumors oh, i've sorry, seen, I've seen yeah. that let's not talk but, about that please but yeah i mean that's that's great and like all defenders of a similar profile i'm not sitting there going oh we're gonna have to play a low block if this guy comes in you know you can see they can all come in and keep things going tommy asu is um like he's a very rare player like comes in at 18 million just works hard really good age and can do it across the whole back four he can invert he can Mm. the only thing i've always actually struggled with is does he overlap and offer that attacking threat but i mean the evidence of yesterday he can um, yeah, and, I, I love him. And when he first came in, he was overlapping. I, I don't know if you remember, but he was overlapping quite a bit when yeah. he first came in. Um, surprisingly, quite a bit because it was insinuated that, well, we all remember when he came in, that guy on Sky Sports talking a bag of shit, saying he's not a right back, he's not this, he's not that. And in the end, look, look, look at him. And, and Jess said, Ben White, look over your shoulder. At times this season, Zinchenko's had to look over his shoulder because of Tommy Asu. Mm-hmm. You mentioned the inverting stuff against City, finding himself in the final third, having an impact there. Tommy Asu is just someone that can fit in every single position. And the thing about Timber is he's similar. He can fit into a lot of positions. So it's one man we've lost, but it's one man that can cover three positions that we've lost. So that's probably what well, I to in pre-season, we started the United game in New Jersey with Timber left back. No, Tommy Asu left back and Timber right back. Yeah, and I, I'm re- they feel so interchangeable to me. I'm so interested to see what Mikel does when they're back. Like I, I, I don't know. I, I could see Timber inverting and and doing more Zinni's role and and Tommy Asu tucking into the into the back three like he did. You know, like he's been doing from right back. Um, so I don't know whether that would flip, you know, only a few months on. Um, but these are these are these are great problems, really great yeah. problems. Yeah, great yeah. Problem. The only, the only for me, the only question mark over Tommy Asher has been his fitness. It's been his fitness, like you know. I think when he first came in, he was brilliant. What I like about him is that I don't think he was at the beginning of the season probably a, a, a starter. Um, I think he was always going to be like one of the rotators and all that. But I think his performances have, have, have meant that it's a change of mind now. I, I think that he's probably like in in the starting lineup at this moment in time. And you know, you say about Ben White, I'm a, you know, everybody knows I'm a massive Ben White fan, like, you know, but I don't think he's been quite at it this season, maybe because of the injury and whatever. And Tommy Asu's just come in and just saying, well, if you're not going to be at your best, I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to um, come in and take your place. And he, he seems to have done this at the moment. I think if if Ben White gets himself back to his best, I think that probably he'd be the the option. But I think that when he's played left back, he's done really, really well. The one thing that I think Arsenal have had a weakness over the years is that long diagonal ball from, from say, uh, left to right. And, and they, the wire player gets in. If you ever look at it now, you can say it with Ben White as well, but definitely with Tommy Asu is that when that ball gets cut out every single time we've been meeting it and, and reading it and everything like that, we're not getting that ball in behind us and then we're getting we're getting caught. So I, I think Tommy Asu's done very, very well. I, I'm I'm a big fan of his. I, I, his um stature, he's big, big, tall. And 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 all of a sudden, all you know, apart from Shinchenko, they're all quite big and intimidating players. If you look at them all there, like, you know, so which we've not had in the past, you know, I mean, we've had little uh, Bellerins and uh, uh, Gib- Gibbses and pe- people like that. Do you know what I mean? Like left backs and right back. Now, all of a sudden, we've got powerhouses. And I, I do think that's a big thing. I look, You know, Freddie Lundberg was talking about it the other day, you know, that with, with that invincible side. If you had a look at it, they was all athletes, all big physical players. And it is interesting that, Mikel's been involved with all of that um, when he was playing at Arsenal, like, you know, the Kazulas and the, the Jack Wiltshires and everything like that. He has gone to more to what Arsene Wenger team at the beginning of his career, like with big, strong players, you know, like Havertz has come in, like, you know, Declan Rice. They're not, they're all, they're no shrinking violet side. They're all big, strong, powerful players. 
and 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 up for a battle. And 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 Tommy Hassel definitely up for a battle. He, 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 I think he's been. I think he's forced his way into this team at this moment in time. And that's that. You have to say that's a massive credit to him. Mm-hmm. Where, where does Mikel get that? Sorry, go on, Jess. No, I was just going to say he's probably the perfect example of like taking your chance at Arsenal because we talk about players not taking their chances when they get them. Mm. I think Tommy Asu is probably like one of the best examples of when you get a chance at Arsenal, you have to take it. And these are the level of performances you have to put in. That's a great point. And and not, and what he's done, Jess, is uh, he's, he's played a couple of games and then been left out, you know what I mean? And then he's had to come back in again and do it. And and, and that's brilliant uh, because he has done that. You know, he's, he's played really well on a couple of occasions and then been left out again. But he's come back in, come back in, left out. And now I think, yeah, I think that's a great point. He's forced his way. Very much so. Oh, I was just asking, not, we're not going to start a big discussion on it, but I, I just, like, I'm just curious. I'm just floating this idea out there. Let me know in the comments. Like, where does Mikel's kind of appreciation, because he wasn't that kind of player. Like, he was, what, 5'10", maybe? You know, central mm. midfielder, good on the ball. Now, he never shirked a challenge either. That's the one thing. He never shirked his defensive responsibilities, but I never considered him a clean tackler. In fact, the amount of fouls he used to give away, I found infuriating. You know, and, and then his time at Gu- you know with Guardiola and City was when they were playing with De Bruyne, David Silva, midfielder, and Fernandinho. I don't think any of them were over six foot. You know, I, I don't know. I, I wonder where his kind of um, appreciation for because because you're right. He has they they can they all have superb you know tech these players, but. They're big. They're, 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 you know, we're not. It's not an accident that we're good on, um, you know, we're good on set pieces. It's not an accident. That he, he's, he's built to. He's built a team that can be resilient in this sense. Um, and and you've got to have a degree of physical presence. Um, and like you said, the ones that aren't the tallest, Zinchenko, Erdegaard, Saka, Martinelli, Jesus, they don't half put their body about any of them. You know, it, mm. they're all stuck in. Um, and that's really that's really good because I was quite. I, I did have to have a, like a little applause to my, like just a little clap on the watch long at just some of the some of the work rate going into the last ten minutes when you're five nil up, like the, like the desire to keep that clean sheet. And I know that we were sort of having a laugh on the watch long about Gabriel's celebrations for the block, but forget the celebrations. Just the fact that he was that desperate to make that block, like there there is a there is a standard and then application to defending that we used to tear Arsene Wenger's Arsenal for in the, in the latter few years, you know, and when it went wrong with Emery, he used to be like, these guys can't do the basics. And now we're going above and beyond that. Do you know what? I love that yesterday. I'm going to say that, like that Gabriel thing. I don't care what anybody says. I love that because I, I remember going to Sheffield United a few years ago when we lost 1-0 up there. And when you go to Sheffield United, you're right behind the goal. We conceded a goal from a, from a corner and none of them were bothered. They went, oh, well. Just went like you know. Now I see players celebrating tackles to keep clean sheets and all that. Like it is very, very important, very, very important. Like you know mm-hmm. that you keep clean sheets and defend properly. And I think there's a mentality about it. Like you know, I've got to say this. Another thing, like how has Gabriel got left out of the side in the first few games? He's been absolutely. It was the great mystery of the season so far is why Gabriel didn't play those cup. I can't. I, I'm still thinking about it now. I still don't know. Like I'm like, what were we trying to accomplish? I don't really get it. I, I'm, I'm with you, Jess. We were saying it last night. How <laughs> was he left out? So he's, you know, it, it, it's it's. I, I don't know. Saint Master of or it's a master stroke from. I, I really think uh, you know Arteta gets these things in his head that he just can't shake for whatever reason. I I honestly think it's because mm-hmm. where Ben White is a centre back who can play right back. I don't think he sees Gabriel as a centre back and play left back. So so I when Partey was starting at right back, he needed Gabriel to basically be a left back when we had a back four. And I just don't think he is one. And that was it. I honestly think that was the even though we would have spent 70% of the time with the ball and Gabriel would have been in the exact same areas of the pitch, you know, when we shift into that back three and Partey and Verts, whatever, I just don't think he wanted to do it but then there was obviously all the links as well so look the point is there's so much going on <laughs> what's that i said there's so much going on at that time this yeah hard to there point. was it was it was very it was a re- like that those first three games were a really weird time like very yeah so. even though we kind of picked up points it was so yeah. the team looked so different yeah and i head round it seeing party right back was a big one 
But listen, we, we, we've just gone through top of the Champions League group, renders that game week six game against PSB meaningless. But one game that isn't meaningless is Wolves this Saturday. Um, it's at Emirates. And yeah, I mean, we've just gone top of the league, so nothing less than a win. But has anyone done it? Well, does done enough to keep their position, I was about to say. But Havertz was the only one that's come in. He scored two and two, so I don't think that's a question. But would anyone do anything different aside from going in with the same lineup? Lee, you're about to say something. I'm surprised Trossard was left out yesterday and didn't come on. I've got to say that, like, you know, um, I think it's done well for us in the last few games. He didn't play as well against Brentford, but. When he went out to that wide area, he'd done it. I think Trossard, the problem Trossard's got is that when that front three is fire and fit, it's a very, very hard to break into. Very, very hard to break into. Um, maybe he might make a change in there. I'm worried about this game, guys. Going to say it, putting it out there. Worried about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you why. Because Wolves must be due one. They must be due something from VAR. They have been mm. mugged off shot down more times than anybody. If anybody's got a chance to rant about VAR, it's um, it, it's uh, Gary O'Neill, like, you know. And uh, if they're going to get a decision, it's going to be at the Emirates. I'm telling you that now, like, you know what I mean? So I am I'm a little bit worried about it. We've got to make sure that that doesn't come into the equation, like, you know, because um, they are due a VAR decision, you know. Um, I, I kind of feel sorry for for Wolves now, like you know, some of the decisions that they've got was unbelievable, like you know, and, and on Monday night as well. But um, yeah, we we've got to, uh, oh, but like we've got to be on it. We've got to be on it. If we're not, it could be a struggle. I'd be unbearable if we had the decisions go against us. They've had. Oh, I, 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 no, no, I'll be able to take it. I'll be able to take it. Think I'm annoying now. Yeah, yeah, wait, well, yeah. Imagine, imagine our Wolves fan. I mean, some of the ones they've gone against, they've had against them. It's incredible, are scandalous, are absolutely horrendous. I cannot believe it. Um, I, I, I really rate Wolves. Um, I like the work Gary O'Neill's doing. Um, there's something about them on the road. They're not, they're not. At home, I don't know. At home, I think they're kind of they're taking it to teams has kind of swung in their favour. Um, I think away from home, like they were brilliant at Old Trafford, but lost. They were they were um, you know away at Fulham, lost away at Sheffield United, and I think am I right? Did I read in a group chat Turkish with work that we've got was that Lamina and Gomez are out? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I like that Lamina that, by the way. I like that. That is that, that's their central midfield too. Um, and if Pedro Neto is fit, well, he's only just back, although um, hopefully he sees this as an audition, but just don't be too good. Just like be good enough that we buy you in a few months. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm very wary of Wolves. Can you just hit some form? Um, and, I, and I like Gary O'Neill and I know what Lee means. Feels like there won't be due one. <laughs> but look, um, we... I wouldn't do anything. I wouldn't change anything with the 11. Um, they all deserve to keep their place. I do feel sorry for Trossard. Like I, this guy just sits in between. Like he's the perfect squad option. Yeah, but he's not a starter. But he's like the perfect squad option. If you have an injury anywhere, Trossard can come in and do it. He could probably invert from left back and be brilliant. I think he's happy. Um, with, I think I think he's happy with that role. I, I don't know if he is, and, and that's not me saying he's like a, it's a problem or anything for him. I'm not saying that at all. Um, yeah, maybe the part of me that goes, I'm 28, turning 29, and I'm, you know, getting squad minutes in a, in a team that's top in the Champions League group and top of the league. Like, yeah, there, there's sure there's positives in that. But I think he's a player that, I, I think, especially for his performances, will be thinking, I don't know what I've got to do. I'm just not, I'm not as fast as Martinelli. I'm not quite as good as Jesus. I'm not really an eight. Like, you know, and I think he said, didn't he, that he's played eight for Belgium? I've not really followed him at Belgium, but they're, you know, great. Um, so he'll get lots of minutes across the season, but I do think he deserves more starts. And I think the really missed opportunity was when Jesus was injured and, and Eddie was starting those games. So I'm not trying to, but yeah, I think that was the missed opportunity there. He, he, sh he should really be the backup to Jesus while we don't have that plan B and Havertz isn't seen as a striker. Well, 12th man, essentially, that's what Trossard is. Definitely. Yeah. And his, yeah. I actually think his biggest problem is off the ball. I think Trossard reminds me a lot of like 
an Arsene Wenger forward creative midfielder type that loves the attacking side of the game, but doesn't really have much interest in the other part, which is fine. But in Mikel Arteta's team, he values off the ball so much. And one thing that Trossard did say in that, that same press conference is that he needs to stay switched on. And I think that that shows his awareness. He understands that like, yeah, I'm really good on the ball, but like off the ball, I can be got at a little bit, you know? And I thought, you know, when played against Brentford, he played in that left eight. It, he kind of, you know, it wasn't the easiest fit. It wasn't. So I think for Trossard, like, when you look at Arteta and who he values, I think you can see that like off the ball is super important to him. And unless Trussard can gain that, like he's not the best presser. So he's never going to, you know, like our, look at our front three, they press like nobody's business. Look at Odegaard. Um, you look at like, look at Havertz who's done nothing. Havertz. But, exactly. Yeah. So he's never, Had I don't think, nothing. I think that's the main, I actually think that's the biggest reason for it more than anything, but it doesn't have anything to do with his quality. You know, it's just some players are just not going to give you that pressing and all that kind of stuff and the duels and all that. That's just not his game. It's just not good as the front three. It's as simple as that. The front three are unbelievable. You know what I mean? You, you know, but you've got to have someone to back that front three up. And he's the perfect, perfect one for that. Like, you know, and I think maybe, you know, if, if when you're looking to sign for a football club, you when he signed for Arsenal, you know, you, you know that it's going to be tough getting in front of them free when you sign first and foremost. Yeah. So, Shouldn't be hard to get in front of Eddie though. I think that's, that's the one. Yes. That, uh, yeah. I, I, definitely I, be in I, front I, of him. Jess, so. that is the perfect, that, that is the thing that I would be getting out with that he's getting more minutes than me. Like if that would be the one, but um, yeah. But in the last couple of games, he has sort of been the, that one up front, and he you know, yeah, took that role. But I, I agree with the pair of you there. He should have had more opportunities. Why Jesus wasn't out, and he's got quality yeah, numbers, yeah. numbers on whether he's on the pitch or coming on the pitch. So the twelfth man, I'll take him. And to be honest with you, there was times at Brighton he was being heavily rotated. That's why I think he's happy with his role at Arsenal. I mean, what other big six club does he, does he start for week in week out? All right, Tottenham. Aside for that, which is not not exactly um, leveling up. He doesn't, you know, and Chelsea, God knows what they are anymore. Um, and United, yeah, forget them. We're talking Man City and Liverpool here. That's where we're at. And to have someone like that coming off the bench, um, when you look at the players City and Liverpool have had, I think Trossard's as key a member of the team as as the front three, even though he's, you know, I agree with me, he's not as good as them. There's going to be many games where these men ain't firing or these men ain't clicking and we're going to need Trossard to come off the bench or come start a game and, and do something. Lee, you said you're worried, Jess. James, worried about Wolves or wary? I, I mean, wary. Yes, that's the word. Very, very good word. Wary. That's a that's a really good um a way to put it. I'm always before a game trying to under like what could go wrong. And Lee's 100 percent correct that like they're due a VAR decision going their direction. So it's kind of like, okay, is that going to happen? Um, I would love for Wolves to be beaten before they even come out. You know, they don't have some of their better players. They know they're playing against us at home. I would love for them to just do one of those where it's like they barely play. But we just have to see what they're up for. But I, I, this should be a win for Arsenal. It really, really should, like, and pretty straightforward. But the Premier League is just sometimes it can be unpredictable mm -hmm. and unforgiving. So I am happy that we were able to rotate some of our players out and get Zinchenko and Tomiyasu some rest because yeah. they're going to be fresh. And ready to go. So yeah, it's there's anybody can get got in the Premier League. We know that, you know. But at this stage, Arsenal need to make this pretty routine. And so I'm kind of hoping for like a two nil. You yeah. know, that's what I'm hoping for. Per per perfect timing, Jess, because it's prediction time. The table's up, people. So if you're watching on video, if you're watching on YouTube, it's there. But if you're listening on audio platforms, because we are on audio platforms, then let me tell you what it's looking like. Twenty one games played, twenty one prediction predictions made lee is top two correct scores 16 points i'm in second two correct scores 14 points james and jordan tied third place one correct score each 14 points each so it's all it's all tight it's, it's correct scores really and um points deductions for me that separates um and me separates the league and me <laughs> 
Yeah, but uh, no one, had, no one had 115 charges like me. <laughs> well, none of us broke the rules like you. <laughs> he's still bitter, ain't he? Like? He's still bitter. Been, like. I've been to court and back. I haven't been proven guilty, uh, mate. So innocent until proven guilty. But let's make predictions. Jess has kicked us off with a two nil. And um, we've got Jordan's prediction in the back pocket, but we work our way down from top to bottom. So Lee, oh, I'm going to go with Jess. I'm going to say two nil. I'm, I'm, I'm pushing on three nil, but I think like um, Wolves will be a little bit more defensively stronger. Like you know, so two nil. Two nil. I'm going three one. I'm going for the classic three one, James. Mm. One nil. Reserve tight one nil. Um, so that's Jess yeah. going two nil. James going one nil. Lee also going two nil. Sorry, I've gone three one. And Jordan, we have it coming in right now. He's gone three one as well. He's absolutely ruined it. He's absolutely <laughs> ruined it. <laughs> he just can't help himself, can he? That boy. And you know what? The one thing about Jordan, he knows I go three one. So it's not even like he'd be surprised by this. So he's decided to go on holiday and copy my predictions. All right, cool. Jess, you're welcome anytime. Listen, we'll talk after this anyway. No, no interruptions, no nothing from Jess. <laughs> Get rid of Jordan straight away. It's been a pleasure. Look, the time, we've just a minute past an hour. Usually at this point, Jordan's got his two fingers up. He's about to say, I've got a couple more points on the point we talked about 55 minutes ago. Let me bring them up now because it's the perfect yeah. time. Yeah, look, James knows. Um, look, big up Jordan, same way, but show Jess some love in the comments. And more importantly, go subscribe to her channel, She Knows Arsenal. That's all the predictions in now. And as always, we're going to slowly but surely move on to comments of the day. But before we do, people, I was going to say a reminder, but a heads up. This evening, Fan Zone is live, and Fan Zone's about you. Download the AFTV Plus app. You can have your say. Robbie's going live. It's been a little while since he's done a Fan Zone, I believe, and a lot of people have been waiting to ask him questions and jump on and talk to him. So Robbie's going live later on Fan Zone, and I believe he's going live with Laurie. And they're always clashing with their opinions. So that one should be a good one, people. Make sure you're there. Subscribe, put the notification bell on. You'll know when it is, but I'll also tell you, 7 p.m. live. And we don't have Jordan. But we've got Lee with one finger up. So go on. Yeah. I just want to ask one question. One question to us all, like, now. And I want an honest answer, like, yeah? Can I have an honest answer? Yeah. Depends what the question is, mate. But go on. Right. Sunday, Man City, Tottenham. Who do you want to win? Oh, Tottenham. I don't give a shit. Tottenham. I, I, I'll lead the way. I don't know. I'm not fast. Draw. I don't want to tempt fate that Spurs... Spurs, all their injuries, winning at City would be quite big for them. I, that, yeah. that, I, I don't yeah. think that's a good. Thing. I want, I want City. Sorry, what? City to win. No yeah. way, Lee, man. You're, you're, it's your WhatsApp group again. They're getting to. Ah, no, I told you to leave that WhatsApp group. Every every show, you're just logging into that. I cannot have Spurs winning that game. I, I like. I'm going to say this now. What, There's a draw. Draws exist. Whatever results, good for us. Any any results, good for us. If if we I, win on Saturday, kind of, but, but we. The yes. City win's not good for us. It's not good for us. We drew with Spurs at home. I know they dropped other points, City, but I, they'll kill I, them by I the live way. in that same petty mindset that Lee has right now, where it's like, yes. I need to think about my group chat. Okay, I can't. I need to think about my group chat. I cannot, I cannot handle it. I've been enjoying Big Ange getting his yeah. cup of and I I'm gonna, to... I'm gonna say it now. <laughs> I get just as much satisfaction out of him losing as Arsenal winning. I do like yeah. that. Really like. But a draw oh, would be best for oh, sure. Sorry. Draw would be better for us, but if you can only take a winner, Tottenham. Look, yeah, call me, call me uh, short, like you know, not not thinking big picture, but I just cannot do a Spurs win. I can't do it, y'all. Thank you, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> a Spurs, I don't think a Spurs win is good Spurs at all. Win, that's a Sp we win that in a, in a sense because we're, we're up against Man City, so I, I'm, I'm taking that all day. When, when they was 2 0 up last year at half time, I was guessed they were thought, miles off us, though. They were miles yeah, off us. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like, oh, I don't... don't worry about Tottenham, don't worry about them. They were fine. The, the, the like, the like, right. did you see that? Turkish, the bubble with the like, the thumbs up just popped up. Oh, again. yeah. That's like what my you... little streaming thing. If I do that, it like has a little bubble that comes up. I know. Wait, that. so could you explain Only that to me. us? Because... Only... I... Oh, no, yours did it too. Okay, so it's not just me. Yes, how cool. Why don't you I don't get one? Hey. No. <laughs> what's, what's, what's 
what's going on up there? Like, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that we have it. The guys at the bottom don't have anything. <laughs> that's just that that right. <laughs> Quick, Turkey, no, throw in a dab. See what happens. No, no, you're going too far, mate. You're going too, you're going too far. <laughs> Jesse, it must work for you if you do two thumbs up because the one thumb not work for you, no? Look at that. Mm. Look at that. When, whenever I do shows, it works for me. It's not working for me now, but I learned that no. like live. No. I was like, I did that and I had a bubble and I was like, what is this? Like, I've never seen it before. Well, you, you only probably, get one. You before. probably won prediction leagues before because I think that's what it is. When he's got... trying so hard to make it come. Yeah, <laughs> no, it, was Jordan, it was Jordan last time, so it's not just a host thing. Mm. Yeah, see, it's yeah, it's, it's like a yeah, it's got to be like admin thingy. I don't know. No, I'm gonna try some different hand signals if this doesn't start working. <laughs> Look at these mugs below, Bob. Trying to. Do... <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> Hey, good luck, lads. Let's do comments of the day and wrap up the show. I've got yeah, my... let's get out of here. Christ, I like, you know, yeah, fair enough of this right here. From nice I want some then. Evan, I want some Evan. Yeah, let me just say Evan Classic Jordan. He says, For the last two episodes, he said, quote, I've just got the one comment today for comment of the day. That's what it's supposed to be. Great show, guys. Keep it up. That's what I want, <laughs> I want to remind people. That's what it's meant to be. One comment of the day. Jordan comes with a book of yeah. seven comments after keeping us an hour 20 minutes talking about points yeah, that up with you, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, let's, be, let's be honest like, you know. yeah, I'm starting to regret my decision in bringing him on a, a couple of years ago but let's not talk let's not talk behind his back we'll talk we'll, we'll talk in the oh group. yeah Talking the group. Turn around and says oh this show means everything to me I'm off for two weeks I'll say you know it's unbelievable you know. <laughs> um who's who's up next I believe Jess has a comment too so everyone is locked and loaded okay what is this <laughs> Wait, what am I doing? No. Okay, sure. Fantastic. I've got two. No worries. I brought one. I brought one for you, Jess. That's, that's even better. Anyone that missed Jordan, they would love that bit. Oh, need to find a comment on the last part. Okay, I missed that part. I didn't do my homework. Okay. Don't kill me, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> that's so hard to do my work. Go on, David. Go on, Lee. Um, I've got from uh, the Liam Nielsen. Uh, watching to find out how this win was Havertz's fault. Um <laughs> Can you not? Can you stop? Are you just trying different? Anyway. <laughs> and this one from Ryan, who said, had a bad weekend, but this podcast helps with the spirits. Ryan, hope you're doing well, and I'm glad that the podcast um, um, has lot, helped. And also, thank you for your support. We, we do appreciate it. So, hope everything is well. Right, my comment is, Lee is in trouble with Julian on The Invincible doing so well and so great. Might have to ask James for a spot on the tactical show. <laughs> it's a no from me. <laughs> it's a definite no from me. I'll be unemployed. No chance. <laughs> All right, people, leave your comments under this video for a chance to feature in the comment of the day show after Wolves, before loot, and the games are coming thick and fast now, so the Forever Arsenal shows will be coming thick and fast. Before we wrap up, make sure you hit the like button. Have we hit a 1,000 likes yet? Probably. If not, let's hit it. If we have, let's try and get to 2K. Why not? And obviously, let's big up the special guest today. First time on the Forever After podcast. She knows Arsenal, Jessica Black. Link in the description below. Big up, Jess. Big up, Jess. Link in the description below. Make sure you go subscribe to her channel too. A lot of good content coming out. I think she's done content with James previously as well. So make sure you go subscribe. Support the Arsenal community, people. Um, Jess, pleasure. I'm sure we'll talk again soon and you'll be on again soon. James, Lee, love as always. We will talk for sure. People, love for the love. We'll be at. Um, we'll be back real soon. Sorry, not we'll be at. It is what it is. FD intro, FD outro. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like, you know, start as you mean to go on. You missed it up going we'll in. Out. You missed it coming out. You know what I mean? But there you go. We'll be out. <laughs> <laughs>